Okay, so the first thing you need to do is title your note page angles if you haven't already. So make sure that you have that written down somewhere because that is important. That should be the title for these whole notes. There actually aren't as many notes as I thought there were gonna be. Um, it's relatively easy. You'll just have to draw a couple of little pictures. So first of all, what are angles? Angles are created when two line segments intersect. Specifically, angles are the space between two line segments at the point at which they meet. I don't need you to write all this. I need you to draw something similar to this shape. You're gonna label the inside angle because this right here is the actual angle. It's the space between the two line segments. Angles are usually measured in degrees, which I think you guys already know. Um, and there are a few major types of angles and a couple of different ways for naming them. And we're gonna look at that on the next slide. But I want you guys to have this part written down right here. So I'll give you a Wait, minute I'm to confused. do that. Wait, I'm confused. Do we write down the words or nope. just like- Nope, draw this. You need to draw this picture and you need to put angle, label it angle in the middle. It doesn't have to look yeah, exactly I, like this. It has to look similar. At least when I labeled the angle, I actually spoke the angle instead of angels. That is good. I'm glad to hear it. Yep. Brody, you've got decent timing. Um, make sure you have your notes titled angle and you draw this picture that I have circled right here. That is the first thing that needs to be in your notes. If you want to write out the definition, you can. If you want to make yourself a note that they're usually measured in degrees, you can. None of that is necessary, especially not if you already know it. And I think you guys do already know this, I hope. That's definitely covered before seventh grade, I think. I would hope that we all already know it. I, I think you do, but I just wanna make sure. I have been wrong before about what students know when they come into math class, so. And there's Taven. How's it going, Taven? Taven, make sure you get out a piece of paper, label it at the top with angles, and then I need you to draw this picture right here. That is the first step. It's gonna take a little longer if people keep showing up in the middle of the thing, but that's okay. Make it work. Okay, who needs more time? I see Carmen and Janie are done. Or Car Carmen and Jan Jasmine. Wow, I can't, words. All right, we're gonna move on. Parts of an angle. So this one, I'm not gonna make you write it down. What I do want you to know in some way, shape or form, and you can even just label it on the back one, um, is the word vertex. So the vertex is the point at which an angle is formed. It's like the corner of the angle. So this right here is the vertex for this angle. Now, um, the ray one and ray two labels here, rays are just line segments that start with a closed point and then end in an arrow. Um, but these can be lines, they can be line segments. It doesn't actually matter. They don't need to be rays. This, the picture that I got just happened to label them rays. Um, but you do need to have something down about what a vertex is. So a vertex is the point at which an angle is formed. Um, you can label the, the one on your last slide. So if you wanna go back to this one, you could just label this a vertex right here. That would be fine. Um, or you can write the definition by hand. I don't really care which, but that needs to be somewhere in your notes. because it's so quiet today. Hope I didn't scare you. Um, vertex, kind of like origin. It's kind of like the origin of the angle, I suppose. Um, but it's more specifically, it's a point. Because sometimes you talk about the actual point. My, my baby is doing just fine. I am not actually pregnant in case that's not very obvious. Wait, are you all calling me fat? I just realized that's why they're all saying I'm pregnant because I've gained like three pounds since the start of this year. 
<laughs> no, okay. I'll choose not to be offended. All right, next up, naming angles. Now this is an important slide. What I do want you to do is start out by drawing this picture here. It is pretty much the same picture as the last time, but these labels are very important because they're gonna tell, tell us how to name angles. So if we look at the shape to the right, there are three different ways of naming the angle shaded in pink. You don't have to shade your angle, you just need the A, the O, and the B. The easiest way to name an angle is after the vertex. So in this case, we would name it angle O. Now, one of the things that is very common with math people is math people are insanely lazy. We do not like writing things out if we don't have to. An angle, it's only five letters, but when you have to write it like 400 times, it gets kind of old. So instead of writing angle, a lot of the time we will write an angle like this, angle O. So this little symbol, if you see it in front of letters, this means angle. So the first way of naming the angle that is shown right here is angle O. This also needs to be in your notes. And here, I'll box all the stuff that's gonna be in your notes. We can also name it based on the points around the angle, which helps us be more specific. And we're gonna see some examples specifically tomorrow in your assignment. Um, you're gonna see a bunch of different examples of angles that it really helps to name this way. Um, but if we start at point A, there's Sol. If we start at point A, we go to point O, and then we go to point B, we formed the angle that is shown in pink, right? Because we start here, we go to this, and then we go this way. That gives us the angle in pink. So the way we'd write that out is angle A, O, B. Now, it's very important that the vertex is in the middle when you're naming an angle using three letters. The vertex always needs to be in the middle of the three letters. Now, the other way we can name this, we can go the other direction, right? We can start at B, go to O, and then go up to A, and that's going to give us angle B, O, A. And again, you'll notice that our vertex is in the middle. That is very, very important for these. So whenever you're naming angles, make sure your vertex is either by itself, if that is enough to tell us what the angle is, um, or it's in the middle. Now, I'm going to erase a little bit of this. You might be wondering why on earth would you want to write out AOB or BOA when you could just write angle O? Oh, that's a lot easier, right? I'm going to show you an example of why we might end up using that. So let's say there was another line here. It went like this. We'll call this C. If I said angle O, which angle would I be talking about? Would I be talking about this angle? Would I be talking about the angle in pink? Or would I be talking about this whole angle? We don't actually know. So giving us the points allows us to label it better. And this part you don't have to draw, I'm just doing an example. So here, sorry. I probably should just keep it simple. This is the part you have to draw. I'll draw a different version over here. So here's our angle. You have angle O, you have A, you have B. If I add another line like this that's C, um, and I say angle O, it doesn't tell me which angle I'm talking about. There are three possible angles here. There's this one, there's this one, and there's this whole big one. Um, and angle O could mean any of those. So if I say angle C, O, A, then we know that I'm talking about the angle that's formed when I start at C, go to O, and then go to A. So that's this one. Angle B, O, A would be the one that's in the middle right here. And then angle BOC or COB would be the whole big angle. Have I super confused you yet? You don't have Zoom tomorrow. A little? Well, luckily your notes will be pretty not confusing, I hope. When we get some practice with this, it'll help make a little bit more sense. Yes, in the box, that's all you have to write and draw. Stuff inside the box. That's all you need on your page for this one. And honestly, for the most part, I'm mostly concerned that you actually try to write stuff down. So as long as you've got the majority of it. Uh, this Friday, Jasmine, like in two days? On what? We're just starting a new unit today. Yeah, you took a quiz yesterday. Why would there be another quiz? The quiz on this is going to be in like a week and a half. Okay, then the test on this is gonna be in like a week and a half. Is that better, Addy? 
The reason that we call it quiz is because it's shorter and easier. So if you want a test, I can do it. A pop quiz, Gracie, means that they throw it on you without warning you ahead of time. So a pop quiz is if I was just like, all right, quiz time in the middle of class. Instead of being like, hey, we have a quiz on this day. Jasmine wants quizzes instead of tests. Okay, I will keep giving you quizzes instead of tests. How about assessment? Does that work, Eddie? High stakes assignment. Okay, I'm gonna move on. So types of angles. Now, this time, what I really want you to do is basically I want you to write these things, but really what you need is a drawing of each one um, and then the definitions. So there are a few major types of angles. Specifically, we're gonna look at four. There are more types of angles than this, but we really don't need more than this. And really we only care about the first three, but a straight angle is at least worth knowing. So acute angles are angles with a measure less than 90 degrees. If you have trouble remembering which one is which, you can always think of acute angle. It's cute, so it's small. Less than 90 degrees, small, cute. That's acute angles. That's this one right here. Make sure you have a drawing of what an acute angle looks like. You already have two, but that's okay. Um, yeah, anything less than 90 degrees. Right angles are an angle which measures exactly 90 degrees. So that's a straight up, straight down one. Often we represent right angles with a little box in the corner. I'm pretty sure most of you already know that, if not all of you, um, but just in case, that is a right angle right there. Now obtuse angles, those are angles with a measure greater than 90 degrees. Specifically, it's an angle that's in between 90 and 180 because 180 is a straight angle. We're only gonna deal with angles that are less than 180, um, maybe 180, but usually that's, that's not really an angle, right? That's just a straight line. Um, so we don't really care about it. So obtuse angles are the big ones. And then straight angles are just angles with a measure of 180 degrees. So make sure you have at least some kind of depiction of each one, some kind of little picture for each one, um, and then a basic definition. You could just put even like acute less than 90 degrees. That would be fine if this is all you put for acute angles. But you gotta have something about a drawing of it. You gotta have something about the measure being less wait, than 90. Wait, wait. Can you hold on just one second? My, my pen ran out of ink. But, I mean, that's I'm not moving on anytime soon. This is a lot of writing to do. So for a right angle, you could do this and say right. Oops, right, I can spell, equals 90. That's, that's really all you need. Obtuse. Greater than 90. And then straight, equals 180. This would work just fine for your notes, the things that I drew in red. Any questions about these? I try to assessment sounds like death. Can we move on? I don't think people are ready necessarily, Jasmine. Okay, does anybody need more time? Yeah, Jasmine, don't make me put the chat to private only, please. Okay, Gracie still needs more time. Now, if your hands are getting tired, that's okay, because we're going to have a little bit of a break in the notes. You guys are going to get a little bit of some space. All right, 
Are we ready to move on or does somebody need more time? If you need more time, please say something in chat. More time? Okay. Grace, are you like copying down the whole slide? No, I just have really tiny handwriting. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Okay, let's move on. So what I want you guys to do is tell me what kind of angles are these? So ideally, I'd like people to play out loud, but um, let's start with this first one. What kind of angle is this that I just circled in red? Is it acute, obtuse, right, or straight? Are you guys all typing in in chat? You're all typing. It is an acute angle, very good. It is less than 90 degrees. It's a small little angle, it's very adorable. Um, so this is an acute angle. You don't need to write any of this down. You can take a break. Well, what kind of angle is this one? Is it acute, obtuse? Right angle. It's a right angle, very good. What kind of angle is this one? Jumping around, confusing you. Obtuse. Okay, maybe not confusing you. This one is obtuse. How about this one over here? Acute. All right, Tristan, I see it. I see you working it. Tristan's got this. Somebody else that's not Tristan. What's this one? Obtuse. Obtuse. <laughs> Tristan, you're still Tristan. But yes, that is obtuse. And then the last one? I'm not, I'm TJ. Straight. straight. It is a straight angle. All right, cool, cool. Now. Measuring angles with a protractor. You still don't need to write any of this down. This is just a little bit of a lesson. More specifically, this is a lesson for using protractors that look like this on a page because you're going to have to be doing some of these in IXL. And I found it very difficult to read these when I was practicing the IXL um, just because of the way they're drawn. Now, um, luckily, I did make it easier in these pictures. So hopefully, you guys will understand a little bit better. Um, but when we're using the protractor, if you're using it in person, you need to line up a little center bit and then line up one of your lines with the endpoint. Um, but when you're reading it online, it should already be lined up for you. All you need to do is, first of all, what kind of angle is this? Is this acute, obtuse, right, or straight? It is an acute angle. So that means that our measure is less than 90 degrees. Now, the reason I asked that at the beginning is because notice that this line, it intersects in between 70 and 80, but also in between 100 and 110. So that means this angle could be 75 or 105. The reason for this is if you had this line going this way instead, so it was this red angle now, this is an obtuse angle. This one measures 105. I can't words. Um, but since we're looking at the smaller angle, this is just 75 degrees. You just read along here right up to there. Pretty simple for the most part. So let's try a little bit, or let's try one. Um, so I have an angle that goes this way. And let's say I go to here. Can anybody tell me what is the measure of that angle that I just drew? So notice that it's hitting at a couple of hash marks past the line. Okay, yeah, it is 122. So again, this time it's an obtuse angle. It's bigger than 90, so we're looking at the inside numbers um, and the inside numbers that we go to right here. Now, technically, I should probably tell you guys the way that it's actually read is if you start it on the left, then you read the big numbers because that's where it starts at zero. If your line goes to the right, then you start it at the inside numbers. I always just find it easier to figure out, okay, is the angle bigger or less than 90? Then if it's smaller, I look at the small numbers. If it's bigger, I look at the big numbers. That's easier for me. Whatever 
makes more sense to you guys, it's just fine. Um, so let's do this angle here. Start there. I'm going to not draw the whole line out because it's a pain. What is the measure of that angle right there? It is, in fact, 90 degrees. Let's try this. This time, Janie can't spoil it for everybody. Um, starting here. Let's go all the way to this one. Should be a little bit tougher, especially because my line isn't very straight. I activated your Google. I don't know how I did that, but cool. That is correct, Janie. Anybody else? TJ, what you got? Desmond, For is what? that supposed to be a degree symbol? What what do I I'm confused? What do I have for what? What's the measure of this angle that I drew? Okay, then that is correct, Jasmine. 80. Okay. It's an 80 degree angle. Or no, it's a 100 degree angle. What do you guys think? Oh. Everybody else in chat? Let's see who else, who else is here. Addie, Carmen, Charlotte, Aya, Gracie, Lily, Luis, Sol, Taven, Trist. Oh, Tristan already. 100 degree angle. Okay, Addie, that's correct. Well, Gracie, is it an obtuse angle or an acute angle? Okay, so is it going to be the 100 or the 80? There you go. Okay, well, those of you who aren't, answering hopefully you understand what we're doing because otherwise this will be a tough one when we get to the test on it but that's okay all right now we're gonna have to go back to some notes um now there is a little bit more than what we have down here that i'm gonna make you write um but you can start drawing your pictures now if you would like to because you are gonna need pictures for each of these um angle groupings are a little bit more complicated than just angles um obviously because we use more than one but there are a few major types that we want to talk about. Now, we're mostly going to focus on complementary and supplementary angles, but vertical and adjacent ones are also kind of important. So complementary angles are two or more angles that combine to form a 90 degree angle. So you'll notice here, we've got a 90 degree angle, but it's divided among two different angles in this case, angle one and angle two. One of the nice things about complementary angles is that if we know the measure of one of them, let's say angle one was 60 degrees, because we know that angle one and angle two together form a 90 degree angle, we can solve for angle two without actually knowing um, what it is to begin with. So can anybody tell me if one and two add up to 90 and one is 60, what would two have to be? See if you guys can figure this out. Where's the chat? Why can't I see it? There we go. Very good, Jasmine. So if angle one and angle two have to add up to 90 and angle one has a or is 60 degrees, how much is angle two? Very good, Addy. Good, Janie. Yeah, so in this case, it would be 30, because we know that angle one plus angle two equals 90. For adjacent angles, or sorry, supplementary angles, that's next. Supplementary angles are two or more angles that combine to form a 180 degree angle. So basically, if you have a straight line that's just divided with one other line going up like this, you've got these two angles are supplementary. They form a straight line together. That means they add up to 180 degrees. And it's the same basic idea. If we know that angle two is 60 degrees, we know that angle one plus angle two must equal 180. So we can just do 180 minus 60, which gives us 120 degrees, which would be angle one. So that's one of the nice things about complementary and supplementary angles. They let us figure out measures of angles that we don't have otherwise. Adjacent angles are any angles that share one side in common. So right here, that's the shared side between these two angles. So since they're touching each other, they are adjacent angles. This angle and this angle are also adjacent. This angle and this angle are also adjacent because 
basically share a side. Quick question. Are angles three and four adjacent? Um, I'll explain in a second, Addy. Did you draw the pictures already, Addy? Okay. Then give me just a second. Are angles three and four adjacent? Everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for at least four answers. Are angles three and four adjacent angles? That's two. That's three. One more person. Okay, that's four. So um, you guys are actually pretty split. Half of you said yes, half of you said no. So because they don't share a side, they're not touching each other, they are not adjacent. What I mean when I say sharing a side is that one of their two lines has to be the same. So for angle three, the lines are this line and this line right here. And then for angle four, it's this line and this line. They're made up of the same line, but not the same parts of the same line. We could just have this be a point. Um, this line right here, this line right here. They're different than the line right here and the line right here. So basically, the lines have to actually be shared between the two. They have to share a side, be directly next to each other. Vertical angles, however, do have a different relationship. They're angles formed by the intersection of two straight lines. So basically, for vertical angles three and four, these are vertical angles, and one and two are vertical angles. Yes, I know one and two are horizontal from each other. We call them vertical angles because they're opposite of each other. I don't know why they're not just called opposite angles. I didn't make the naming convention for this, but that's what it means. Now, one of the nice things about vertical angles is that they are congruent. Can anybody remind me what does congruent mean? Very good. It means they are the same. So angle one has the same measure as angle two. Angle three has the same measure as angle four. Now, what you actually need for your notes is you need these pictures written down. For adjacent angles, you don't need anything else. For vertical angles, you need to write this. Three equals four, one equals two. For complementary angles, you need to write one plus two equals 90 degrees. And for supplementary angles, you need to write one plus two equals 180 degrees. As long as you have this written down in your notes, you will be just fine. And that's actually the end of the notes I'm going to make you take. We have a couple more things that I want to go over, um, just so that you're ready for your assignment tomorrow and today. Um, but it'll be pretty brief. I won't keep you too much longer. Uh, sorry, Jasmine. Wait, what? <sighs> Who's coming in right now? North Dakota. Hey, Dakota. Um, so you've missed a decent bit of what we're doing today. You, you'll have to watch the recording at some point. It's okay. Not a big deal. Um, but we're pretty much done with the notes. So That's all right. No problem. Okay. How many people need more time to get this down? I didn't get absolutely everything down, but the stuff I didn't write down is the stuff that like isn't very complicated and that I remember and already know. You need what's in here, basically. Okay, then I'll write that down. I mostly want to make sure that you have the picture somewhere, Tristan. It's very important that you can reference these when we're doing some of the uh, work we're going to be doing over the next couple of days. Okay, is everybody else ready to move on? Anybody need more time? No, can you give me one more minute? One more minute, okay.
Wait, can you go back? Hmm? Oh, is it? Wait, what? Is it not sharing the thing? No, it's not. It actually moved when I. Oh, my bad. It's supposed to stay on this when I tab my screen. Whoops. Wait, does it always do that? Do you guys see my email like during class sometimes? Okay, then I don't that that's weird. Okay. Tristan, I can come back to this if you need it in a little bit, um, but they're also going to be on the next couple pages, so you should be able to write them down at that point. Um, so here's a little bit more detail on complementary angles. Um, so this is actually the stuff I just talked about a little bit ago. Complementary angles are two angles that add together to form a right angle. They always measure, or the measure of two complementary angles will always add up to 90 degrees. And if given the measure of one complementary angle, you can calculate the measure of the other by subtracting from 90. So for instance, if we had, uh, let's say we had an angle that was 20 degrees and we wanted to find the complement, complement, um, then what we would do is just 90 minus 20, which would give us 70. So we know that the complementary angle would be 70 degrees. So that's one of the really nice things about complementary angles. They're really easy to figure each other out. The same idea is with supplementary, except for this time you're doing 180. So supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180 degrees. Supplementary angles put um, put together form a straight line. So it's a very important way of identifying them. If there's a straight line and it's cut by a single thing, then all of the angles will always add up to 180 degrees. If you take the angles on the other side too, then it's 360, um, but we're just worried about one side of the line. And if given the measure of one supplementary angle, you can calculate the other by subtracting from 180. Same basic idea. If I have an angle of 30 degrees, I can subtract it from my 180. And I find out that the supplement of that angle is 150 degrees. And then vertical angles. I don't know why this one was animated. Um, vertical angles are formed when two straight lines cross each other. The angles opposite each other are called vertical angles. So this is a vertical angle with this. Those two are vertical angles. And then here, let me change the color. This angle right here and this angle right here are vertical angles. Vertical angles are always congruent. So that means that if this angle right here is 120 degrees, that means that this angle is 120 degrees. Now, really quick, while we're here, this is something that the eighth graders really struggled to understand, and I'm not sure why. What is the relationship between this angle here and this angle here? Are they complementary, supplementary, or vertical? Any ideas? They're not vertical, because remember, vertical angles are opposites. And they're obviously not complementary because this was 120 degrees. So do you see how this line right here is a straight line? And both of these angles together are the only things on this side of it? They are adjacent, Jeannie, that's correct, but that's not what we're talking about right here. So because these two angles combine here, let me put it in a different color again. So in green, this whole angle right here is a straight angle, right? It's 180 degrees. We've just divided that into the blue angle here and the red angle here. That means that these two angles are supplementary. So since this is 120 degrees and this plus the red angle have to add up to 180, I can figure out that this one is 60 and this one is also 60. So that's just something that we're going to play around with that a lot more next week. So you don't necessarily need to get it right now. I just wanted to give it right here. Um, so anything else? Jasmine, I'll talk to you about it in a second. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I want you guys to tell me, are these complementary, supplementary, or vertical? Are A and B, which one? A and B, complementary, supplementary, vertical. Use your notes. They should look almost exactly like a picture you already have. Good, Gracie. Good, Janie. 
Ooh, interesting. When I make you guys write notes, you actually spell the words right too. That's kind of cool. Very good, Addy. Good, Jasmine. Tristan, Charlotte. Dakota kind of got here late, but you should potentially still be able to do this. Aya, Lily, Luis, Sol, Taven, Carmen. I think that's everybody. You guys are killing me. All right. Um, so these ones are complementary. They form a right angle together. What are the next ones? And yes, Jasmine, those are all correct. Good job. Dakota, very good. Janie, very good. These ones, because they form a straight line when they are together, good, Gracie. These are supplementary. And the last one, since, you know, I kind of did one of each, you could probably fill in the blank. It's going to be vertical. Um, whoop, vertical. But specifically, um, we're looking at angles E and F, which are opposite each other. So those are vertical. OK, let's see. Last thing I believe is just your assignment. So today's assignment is IXL W2. Now, you'll notice that this says you need to go to 90 on this one. Um, the reason for that is, A, it's fairly short. Um, but B, it gives you different problems starting at 70 um, that are, I believe, when it starts making you use the protractor. It could be before that. I'm not sure. Um, but the point is, this one, you need to go all the way to 90. But for tomorrow's, that's going to be IXL W16, you only need to go to 70. Now, tomorrow, as you guys already know, we're not going to have Zoom class or in person. Um, it's just going to be a quick task. This is literally all you have to do for math, W16. You could do it today and still get it done before your next class if you tried. Um, so just make sure that you leave a comment on the post that I'm going to put in the Google Classroom um, or leave a private comment on the assignment or email me. Just check in somehow, some way. I'll have a post up there tomorrow morning so you guys will have instructions on what to do. Um, but that's all you got to do. So uh, as long as you guys got all your notes down, you are free to go. Have a good rest of your day. I will see you all Friday for brief check-ins. Um, and you guys are good to go.